And continuing on this, a new survey reveals that technology is playing a huge role in the supply chain uh, as tech expertise in AI as well as robotics make the top of the list for technical skills in demand. But do you have skills in inventory management and can you communicate effectively? Well, this could be the answer to Australians earning a six-figure salary, reaching up to half a million dollars a year. For more though, let's bring in supply chain expert Tony Richer from Madison Consulting. How are you there? Great to have your company. Thank you for your time today. Uh, thanks for having us. How are you doing? Yeah, really good. I wanted to ask you to start a conversation. Now, survey results show supply chain logistics as well uh, as other executives are among the highest paid managers and directors in the Asia Pacific region. Why is this the case? Well, look, I think in terms of you know their, their cost of employment and their salary, certainly there's always anomalies. I think the big trend that's happening when it comes to salaries right now, specifically for supply chain, is the investment in the functional space is unprecedented. You know, I've been in I've been in this space for over ten years now, and the amount of investment and capital expenditure in supply chain right now is yeah is is unseen before, and so that's trickling down into physical assets and infrastructure and software, but also salaries as well, and so. The importance of supply chain, I think you'd have to be living under a rock for the last 18 to 20 months during COVID, not to realize how important supply chain and logistics are. Uh, and so that's now starting to trickle through into cost of employment and salaries and, and like also competition for top talent as well, which is driving up obviously costs as well for, for employers. I think you've hit the nail on the head there saying that we you have been living under a rock if we haven't realised the importance and how much we just rely on the supply chains and logistics. Um, now, in Australia, data shows that supply chain directors are taking home around $230,000 to $360,000 a year. Um, that's incredible. Does this reflect the importance of their role in minimising the impact of global supply chain disruption? Yeah, hundred percent. Look, I think generally for heads of functional roles, you're probably in that banding already here in Australia. Uh, but I do think the overall cost of uh, cost of salary, cost of employment, sorry, for supply chain leaders here in Oz has gone up in the last couple of months. Uh, I've seen a couple of recent examples in the last few days, even where the kind of back and forth between counter offers and new pe new employers trying to poach someone from a competitor has really driven up the cost as well, well exceeding that kind of three hundred and sixty k mark you just mentioned. So. Uh, it definitely, it's, it's showing the value of the supply chain leadership function. Uh, I guess the other piece that's contributing to that too is the leadership roles in supply chain previously over the last kind of 5, 10 to 15 years had been partially supported by overseas talent, specifically from the UK or US. And obviously with those, uh, with, with the COVID and the borders being closed, there's less of those, you know, leadership type talent coming into the market here. And so the local talent um, is in higher demand. And so that's driving up the cost as well. I mean, it's clear the supply chain is a high growth industry. Everyone wants to make mm -hmm. a six figure salary. There's no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. um, what skills would you say are most sought after at the moment? Yeah, look, that's a great question. I, I, we often talk about a couple of things. I think the first one is you know, e -com had been coming before COVID, uh, but COVID was the final nail in the coffin that e -com is here forever. And so what that means from a skill-based perspective is that order management cycle, the customer order journey, understanding what supply chains in an e-commerce environment look like and understanding how to operate them and, and find solutions to problems is incredibly important. So that order management cycle and e -com skill set in a supply chain is a top priority. The other thing we we're often talking about and seeing now is the digital understanding of how software and technology affect the operations. And so it's that meld of IT and supply chain almost becoming a new function. Uh, and so your digital skills as a supply chain professional are really going to be determining how successful and how senior you become within your career and ultimately re relating that back to pay as well. So if you don't have digital skills and you're in a supply chain role, you're probably outdated and you need to upskill yourself. Tony, there's no doubt that we are seeing severe impacts in the supply chains right now. We heard just before we came to you, Biden addressing this issue as well. Um, we know, I guess, the industry is severely struggling right now and saying that ports in LA are even going to begin working 24-7. Will that, yeah. in fact, help logistically? And I guess, how long do you perceive these bottlenecks to last for? 
<laughs> well, if I could predict that, Hot I'd question. Be a much richer man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, I, and there's a couple of challenges right now from what we're seeing. I think certainly the ports and the congestions of ports and some of the major hubs out of Asia and the US and Europe are causing problems. Uh, the lack of containers and vessels to move goods in terms of ocean freight is, is continuing to be a challenge. And also the cost of, of, of moving your goods internationally is incredibly expensive. Um, recent reports of the last couple of days around raw materials and energy for manufacturing hubs like China. There's been a few reports out of China where manufacturing or companies who produce the majority of the consumer goods or goods for the globe don't have enough energy or power to to run their plants and so that's causing some bottlenecks and creating some bottlenecks in supply chain because there's not enough goods being produced and so hence retailers or companies who want to sell their product don't have the available inventory as well so there's all those kinds of factors contributing to it um, the other kind of challenge that we're going to be running into now is it's peak season two right so we're, we're mid-october eight to nine weeks till Christmas. Uh, this is the busiest time of the year for all supply chain professionals. So you throw all of that into a pot and it makes sense why Biden's probably on, on the news, talk, President Biden's on the news talking about, you know, what can we do to alleviate some of these constraints? Because it, it's it's going to get worse over the next couple of weeks for sure. I'm sure everyone's seen the reports about early Christmas shopping. I hands down would recommend start buying now because um, I don't think there's going to be a lot of stock around come mid-December, that's for sure. I know people have been saying Santa might not be coming this year. Um, I was speaking to someone in this in this same industry as well a couple of months ago, and they were telling me to start shopping mm. back then. So it's definitely definitely mm. an issue, isn't it? Um, I just wanted to touch on lastly before we wrap things up. You guys have an initiative sure. to try and get younger people in the supply chain sector. Just tell us a little bit yep. about that. Yeah, sure. Look, we so our business we do a more mid level to senior level recruitment and supply chain search work. We don't do a ton of work with grads, but what we're finding is companies now are really, because of the constraints around talent, specifically around digital skills and supply chain, or more of the analytical roles, companies are now starting to talk about their opening up to more developing grad programs or being open to training and developing non-supply chain talent to bring them into the space because of the lack of skills or lack of available people or talent. And so what we've decided to do is create a graduate initiative to really just try to help the grads get into the space, but also find great employers. And we're offering that as a free for service as well. So we won't be charging typically, naturally as a recruitment company, we'd be charging for a service, but because of the constraints around young talent and some of the challenges that the network and the supply chains are facing around people right now, we thought this might be a nice way to get some grads who are still eager to find good jobs and, and leveraging our network as well. So we, we hope it supports a little bit. And even if we can find a few people finding some great jobs, that's a great cause. Oh, good on you. Tony Richard, thank you so much for joining us today. We'll catch up with you soon. Cool. Thanks for having us.